For more on this showdown, let's bring in Maya McGinnis from Washington. She is the president of the Committee for a Responsible Federal Budget. Maya is also the director of the Fiscal Policy Program at the New America Foundation. That's a nonpartisan think tank. Uh, Maya, great to have you back on Bloomberg. So another weekend, still no deal. You're kind of holding out for the big deal. What has to be in that big deal to make a difference? And will we get it in your view? Well, right now, there's sort of a couple different models that people are looking at. And one is kind of the the budget, balanced budget amendments or spending caps, the rules that would help us get on the right path, but aren't specific at all. And then there's the kind of plan B, which uh, basically returns us to the days of a, a fiscal commission, which of course we just had. Mm. But really the only way we're gonna fix this problem is the big deal, which is going to include social security, Medicare, defense, big spending cuts, and tax reform. All the things that all of these different approaches will get us to, just they wanna go there very slowly, and the time to act is now. So yes, I think that anything short of the big deal really is just another kind of way of delaying all the fixes to the budget that we know we need to make. My, you mentioned now, of course, time is time is running out, but you mentioned that taxes have to be part of it. As our Al Hunt writes in Bloomberg View, I mean, the Republicans are so afraid of even saying the word taxes because they're worried about re-elections. I mean, if taxes are completely off the table for Republicans, how can we make any progress on this situation? Well, that's completely right that the issue of tax increases has become this huge third rail, the biggest of all third rails out there. But there are many ways to finesse this issue and actually come up with tax reforms that will be so good from the Republican perspective, the fiscal perspective, and the progressive perspective. And what I mean by that is there are ways to, because there's so many tax breaks in the code, to lower rates, to simplify the tax system, to be more conducive to economic growth, but also to maintain the progressivity that we have in the tax code and to help with the fiscal situation. But what it takes is major fundamental tax reform. That's what has to be part of the deal to kind of break this log jam. If we just do incremental switches to the tax code like we focused on in the past, I don't think we'll get there. So you need to go big on taxes as well as big on the whole fiscal deal. But again, look at what's going on in Washington. Do you feel like that uh, everybody gets it, that we've got to start, you know, everybody's got to kind of give a little in this process and stop worrying about re-elections at this point? Well, I think that there's no question that that is the truth, but obviously this is a political moment that so many people are playing in different ways, and unfortunately, it's easier to do the easy things or not fix the problem, make political speeches about fixing the budget, and not get to those actual tough choices, which are the only way you're going to fix the problem. So yes, there will always be segments of both parties that will go for the easy fix or demagoguing and not help being part of the compromise. The big question is here, Will there be enough members of both parties, because this mm. will never get done unless it's done in a bipartisan way, who will come together and fix the problem? You know, my S&P watching very closely what's going on in Washington. I spoke with uh, John Chambers of S&P on Friday. They're expecting what, I think a, a one, a 50% chance that uh, the AAA rating could be cut in the next 90 days, even if the debt ceiling is raised by that August 2nd deadline. They don't like what they're seeing in terms of the political wrangling in Washington. You know, it's hard to see us getting beyond that point. I mean. Do they not, the lawmakers in Washington, in your view, you've worked with people from both sides of the aisle, do they not understand uh, the fiscal situation that we're facing, especially when we look at what's going on in Europe at this point? I think people do understand that they're not willing to give politically yet, but this is a very important reminder that we're hearing from the rating, rating agencies, which is there are two challenges here. We have to lift the debt ceiling. Talk of not doing that is irresponsible, and luckily I think we're on track to do that uh, in time. But it's not enough to lift the debt ceiling. We have to lift the debt ceiling and put in place a large budget fix, not a small budget fix in the neighborhood of one or two trillion dollars, which some people have been talking about. But the problem is so big that if we don't hit that target of around four trillion dollars, the rating agencies may not be reassured. Global credit markets may not be reassured. Now, it's all complicated by that markets act very uh, differently towards the U.S. And when things get risky, it can actually help our, our treasuries. But that will not last forever. And when we start to see ripple effects into our own markets here in the U.S., it will be too late to make these changes, which is why we have to get ahead of the problem. We have to lift the debt ceiling. But failing to go for this big deal just means we'll have to fix this all again later. It will be okay. politically more difficult, and we may have run out of time. We got it run. We're running out of time right now, Maya. Thank you so much. <laughs>